Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and a bit of a different episode today we're going to be looking at these SI5351 modules that are freely available on eBay and such places but before we start don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join the Facebook group, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look at my website microchips.net and let's get started so yeah, we've got these SI5351 clock generator boards and you can see one is the generic purple one and one is the Adafruit one which you would think being a lot more expensive than the purple ones would perform a lot better but it doesn't, it's just the same as the other ones and they all have a inherent problem and that problem is the crystal the crystal is just a normal everyday two pence generic crystal and they drift and they drift and they drift and some of them can take up to 30 minutes to stabilize but we're gonna have a little play anyway so here's my board that I put in my TriStar and let's have a look at it so for the purpose of testing I broke it out so I can switch between boards nice and easily so here we have the Adafruit unit. It's completely untouched. And let's have a look at how much it drifts. So on initial power up and using the Etherkit calibration library, you can see that it's quite a bit down, but that's fine because when you're programming these, you have to put in a calibration factor. This takes into account the crystal and the other parts so what we're looking for is 10 megahertz bang on the nose and that will then give you a calibration factor that you can program in to whatever you're using to program so there's 10 megahertz and we've still got it on the etherkit library now what will happen it will start to drift and it won't be immediate but over the, over the course of 20, 30 minutes, it will drift. And as you can see, it's still moving. So what I've done is I've taken some videos at five minute intervals and we'll have a look. So this is five minutes later. You can see we're down already five hertz from the original 10 megahertz. Now we're into 10 minutes in and it's starting to move down a bit further. 15 minutes. And we seem to be stable ish. But what you'll find is that some boards don't move a lot and some boards move quite a bit. It's quite hit and miss, really. So we're in. We're in 20 minutes now from its original um, calibration. As you can see, it's moved down only six or seven hertz, but it's still drifted. So what me and Chris DT307 have found is that you have to leave these things at least half an hour before you put the calibration factor in or else they just move all over the show. So this one's stabilizing about 20, 25 minutes in from its original 10 meg calibration. And this is all to do with the onboard crystal. Because you know, onboard crystals move. These crystals that are on the boards don't cost a lot of money at all. Yeah, they only cost literally just a few pence. And that was my test jig that I was using. As you can see, there's no SI and crystal on that. So here we have it set to a standard Cybernet frequency, uh, crystal frequency. And from power up, you can see it's, it's starting to drift. So again, I've done this over five minute segments. So on, on initial power up, it moves and then it starts to just go slower, but it does drift. 
so you can see it's moving down until we finally hit our calibration so this is like 15 minutes in and we're getting close to the calibration frequency or what it should be at which is 2330 all the zeros that's what it should be on when it's calibrated so basically you run the ether kit you put your calibration factor in and then this should stabilize so we're at about 20 minutes there and you can see it's it's bang on what you should expect but it will it will move just a little bit more until it settles down so as an experiment we've got the tiny sa just reading and it's spurious so you can see the fundamental frequency on the left of 2330 and we can see two spikes over to the right and these are being generated by the si or something on that board just bear those in mind for later so what myself and dt307 have come up with is a tcxo version so a tcxo being a temperature compensated crystal oscillator and it should be a lot more stable so i'm just getting the tiny sa into a frequency spread that we can see and as you can see we do have a peak there at about 25 megahertz which the crystal is running at so that's fine and you can see we've also engineered it with a can as well and that peak from before has disappeared so putting a can on it really helps so again we've got another type of board here and you can see the 25 megahertz bang in the middle that's the frequency of the tcxo which you would expect because these things do resonate quite quite hard should we say and we put a can on top of it and it's gone and referring back to the two spikes from beforehand they've disappeared as well so even though the tcxo does resonate the 25 megahertz a bit harder it doesn't resonate those peaks as much so this has taken quite a bit of work to get it to this stage but on the board there we have basically the breakout board built onto the board we've got the si5351 and we've also got a 25 megahertz tcxo under there which is rock solid it does move a couple of hertz when you first power it up so there's 2330 and you can see it's one hertz out now because it's temperature compensated it does take a few seconds to get itself steady but you can see it's night and day compared to the crystals these things do not move at all so in the interest of experimentation i've made my own breakout board as well so it's exactly the same pin configuration as the normal breakout boards but this one has got a tcxo on board exactly the same pins exactly the same wiring exactly the same level shifters apart from we have a tcxo now whilst it's on its calibration there we'll talk about the tcxo and a normal crystal the normal 25 megahertz crystal is pennies to buy and some of these tcxo units they can three four pounds just for the crystal unit so you know there's a lot of difference between something that's just a couple of pence to something that can be up to four or five pounds for the unit but for stability these things are unmatched against anything and people who know about tcxo units will know straight away that these things are the way forward so this is something me and chris dt307 have been working on for a while experimenting finding the best tcxo and designing a circuit for it 
and designing our boards to have it on board instead of using the breakout board we've incorporated it onto our board and you can see these boards are really 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 stable I mean two three hertz moving in the first 10 seconds and then that's it it's solid it's absolutely solid so Chris has done some work on putting um, using these for the 10695 as well which turns a drifting 3900 into something that's absolutely rock solid so that's what's going to be on our DDS units Chris has already done some work with these Chris has done a lot of work on these especially on the software side I've been working on the hardware side you can see these things are absolutely beautiful no matter how long you leave them they just settle down and stay solid so again with the tiny sa you can see the 25 megahertz peak and you can see the 2330 coming as well which is to be expected because they do um make quite a strong signal these so there's my breakout board with its can on top and let's have a look at the tiny sa so you can still see the 2330 which you would expect because that's on the output pin but the 25 megahertz peak has disappeared 26 echo kilo 168 good afternoon the name's graham golf romeo alpha hotel alpha mike located manchester uk qsl Yeah, 5 and 9 plus 10 into uh, United Kingdom there, QSL. Okay, good DX to you, my friend. 73, thanks for the quick contact. QSL, this is El Tour Victor Oscar Gold Set, Federation, Equal Romeo 24. Special in Acropolis, Italy, in Greece. You are in my login, the more information on Platter DX. Thank you for your call. Thank you for your call, my friend. Good DX, 73. Thank you, bye-bye. QSL, again, this is El Tour so that was my TriStar 747 with the new breakout board fitted and of course it works absolutely beautifully it's absolutely rock solid doesn't move at all so yeah a bit of a bit of a strange video this one i've had to chop and change between things due to the way i film this but our tests myself and chris have found that these breakout boards whereas they do work and they do work very well we can do better and we have done better and we've done a lot better by fitting a tcxo unit onto it so i hope you enjoyed this informative video don't forget to like share subscribe comment join the facebook group join patreon buy me a coffee all that lot and thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video